Valheim is a very extensive game with a lot of different ways to play and that's also what makes the game so good. But there's a few things you should know about that will make your Viking life much easier. So here are 10 mistakes you should not make in Valheim. Number 1. Underestimating stealth combat and blocking. Stealth combat is something most players only use when hunting deer with a bow, but it's much more powerful and useful than you think. When using a knife, you will deal 10 times more damage when attacking enemies from behind. And that's a lot, especially against the stronger creatures in Valheim. When you attack a troll with the Abyssal Razor, for example, it will be down to about 25% health after only one attack. The more experienced you are and the higher the level of the weapon you use, the more damage you will deal with this attack. It takes a bit of time and needs a bit of practice to get used to it and of course you have to play more predictive. But especially when playing alone, this is a good way to deal with stronger enemies. The same with blocking. You can block enemy attacks with every weapon and shield by holding the right mouse button and I would highly recommend to get used to it, cause this will lengthen your life a lot, especially when you're getting attacked by multiple enemies. Also, blocking the attacks of the bosses is pretty important, otherwise you will end up as a tombstone more than necessary. Note that you need stronger shields for stronger enemies, so when you try to block the attack of a Draugr with a wooden shield for example, it won't work. The Draugr will simply hit through the shield. Mistake number 2. Ignoring farming and reforesting for too long. When you start to fell your first trees, you will also pick up beech seeds every once in a while. With these seeds, you can plant new trees and you shouldn't wait too long to do this. Once you are able to mine copper and tin and forge them to bronze, one of the first things you should craft is the cultivator. With this tool, you can plant the beech seeds everywhere in the meadows, preferably somewhere around your base. After only two days, you will have full-grown trees again. And with the cultivator, you can also start to farm carrots. You will find carrot seeds in the black forest and once you picked up the first three of them, you should start farming. Plant the first seeds and wait for three days. Then you can pick carrots. Plant these carrots again and you will receive three seeds from every carrot. So if you always plant one third of your carrots, you will never run out of seeds. With the carrots, you can then craft carrot soup that will give you a much higher health and stamina boost than every other food you can make at this time. Later on, there's more seeds you can find and plant, but the carrots are the ones you start with. Number 3. Placing too many portals. Portals are very important in Valheim and will help you to travel much faster between different locations on your map. But to do this, you don't have to build two portals every time you want to connect two locations. Just have two or three portals at your base and reconnect them. Similar to the use of a telephone. You only have one device with which you can dial several numbers. You don't have 20 phones and only dial one number with each of them. And that's the same with the portals in Valheim. If you want to travel to the mountains, insert the tag for this portal. If you want to travel to the swamp next, reconnect the portal to the swamp and so on. To help you remember all of your used tags, you can either install signs with the tags on the wall or you mark the portals on the map using their tags as the name of the marker. This way you will have like a metro line map. Just look at where you want to go and insert the right tag. Mistake number 4. Not taking a portal with you while exploring. When you roam around and explore the map, you should always have 20 fine wood, 2 circling cores and 10 grey dwarf eyes in your inventory. Not because these resources look good in your pockets, but because you can build a temporary portal with them. This is helpful when you want to get back to your base to rest, sleep or simply get rid of materials you collected. For this purpose, I have one portal in my base which is permanently tagged with Voyage. Once you discovered a region or location where you want to place another permanent portal, just get back to your base with the temporary portal, grab material for another one, head over to the new location and place and tag the permanent portal. Remove the mobile portal and go on with exploring. Note that you also need 10 wood for a workbench, but as you can find normal wood almost everywhere, there's no need to drag it around with you. Another mistake you should avoid making while exploring is number 5. Not using abandoned huts or villages for outposts. You can find old huts and villages everywhere in Valheim, so why not rebuild and use them as outposts? Place a bed and a campfire over there and maybe one or more chests, so you always have a safe spot where you can rest, sleep, respawn or just drop materials you don't want to drag around any longer. This way you can build up a mesh of outposts on your map. 
Just don't turn every hut you find into an outpost, I think that would be a bit too much. And don't forget to mark your outposts on your map just like the portals, so you always know where the next safe place can be found. And that leads me to mistake number 6 already. Not marking locations on your map. When you open the full map by pressing M on your keyboard, you can mark locations by clicking a spot with the left mouse button. You can choose between different marker shapes, which makes it easier to identify portals, dungeons or houses at first glance. As already mentioned, you should name the portals with their tags, but everything else is personal preference. You also don't have to mark everything on your map. At the beginning I marked every little berry bush on the map, but I'm not doing this anymore. I just keep a lookout for berries while exploring and that's enough so far. Note that you can also cross out and remove markers. When you click a marker again with the left mouse button, it will be crossed out, which is useful when exploring crypts or silver veins for example. This way you always know which location you have mined or finished already. To remove a marker completely, click it with the right mouse button. Another useful tip for the map is, when you have the map closed to the minimap, you can still zoom in and out with the comma and dot key. That's especially helpful when sailing or if you want to have a quick overview of the markers surrounding you. Another controls tip that will make your viking life easier is number 7. Use key shortcuts. It's not a mistake if you're not using them, but it will save you a lot of time if you do. By holding control and clicking an object in your inventory, you can quickly move it to a chest or drop it without having to drag it with the mouse. This also works from chest to inventory of course. By holding shift, you can split a stack or only choose a specific amount of the material you want to take, move or drop with the slider. With the mouse wheel, you can quickly navigate through the tabs of the building menu and by pressing Q you activate auto walk, which is pretty helpful if you are traveling long distances by foot. By clicking the right mouse button, you can then change the direction. Number 8. Not placing workbenches around your base. A workbench will not only give you the ability to build and craft, but also prevent enemies from spawning. So if you have problems with graylings, necks, grey dwarfs or others that keep spawning inside your base, make sure that every part of your base is covered by a workbench. Number 9. Not taking advantage of the rested effect. While sleeping, sitting on a chair in your base or simply on the ground close to a campfire, you will gain the rested effect after 20 seconds. The base effect will last 7 minutes and gives you 50% more health regeneration, 100% more stamina regeneration and 50% boost to all experience points earned. The rested buff can be increased by making your shelter or base more comfortable, so you will receive an extra comfort bonus. For each comfort point you have, the rested effect lasts 1 minute longer. So don't underestimate it, especially when you're out in the wild exploring the map. Just place a campfire every 7 minutes or travel back to your base with a portal and relax for 20 seconds. By pressing X you can sit down at a campfire. Once the buff is applied you can start to explore again with fresh health, stamina and XP boosts. And last but not least, mistake number 10. Not using the power of the Forsaken. Every time you defeated a new boss in Valheim, you receive its trophy that you can mount at the stone circle you started in. You can then activate the power of this Forsaken and use it for 5 minutes. After a 20 minute cooldown you can use it again. So what I recognized is that a lot of players don't really use these powers. They just activate the power of Aegthir, the first boss, and use it every once in a while. But the powers of the other Forsaken are pretty helpful too and you should definitely use all of them to your advantage. The power of Aegthir improves your ability to run and jump while having 60% less stamina usage, so this is pretty helpful when exploring the map or building things in your base. If you are farming wood, you should activate the power of the Elder as it raises the damage you deal against trees, logs and stumps. The power of bone mass should be equipped when you get into another boss fight or when exploring the mountains or the plains, as it reduces physical damage up to 75%. When you explore or transport resources by boat, be sure to have motors power equipped, cause it will provide tailwind all the time. Note that it only changes the direction of the wind, but not its intensity. So when there's only a calm wind, you won't turn it into a faster wind with the power. And with the power of your glute, the fifth boss, you will receive up to 75% damage reduction against frost, fire and lightning. So be sure to use these powers as much as you can. 
If you play in a group, everyone can take another power and, when activated, every player nearby will benefit from it. Or you all take the same power and close the cooldown gap this way. Cause when one player activates a power, only this player has the cooldown. After 5 minutes, the next player can activate the power and so on. So if you play as a group of 4 players, you can have a forsaken power activated permanently. And that's it for today. I hope this video helps you to make your Viking life a bit easier. Tell me what you experienced in Valheim so far and which tips you miss in this list. And if you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumb up and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned. Until then, thanks for watching, I'm the Catwoman and you are awesome.